Welcome, friends. Today, we are doing another fragrance rotation video for the week ending Sunday, the 21st of April, 2024. Tremendous. That is right, my friends. Once again, I have returned to you with another fragrance rotation video. And this week, we are wearing an eclectic mix. I have some high-end designer line. I have some niche. I have some indie. Depending on how you define indie. I have some normal designer line. And I have a rare, a very rare, and already discontinued uh, fragrance which may be being re-released from a famous house, but we will come to that as it is my scent of the day. And on Monday, on Monday, I decided to wear Tom Ford's Beau de Jure. You'll just have to believe us that it's Beau de Jure. It really is. Um, this is my decant because I have one of the... Um, Big decanters of Beau de Jour, which I got for a steal at retail because it was one of those Tom Ford deals where it was a private blend that Tom Ford discontinued and then brought back in the signature line. So they were selling it mill for mill at the signature line price, which was considerably cheaper than the private blend. If you paid the private blend prices, I could imagine you were quite upset by that. And I would have been had I not paid for it at sick, the paid for the private blend at signature prices. I've heard people at the counter complain bitterly, not that it's the sales associates fault, but, uh, the, the legitimate grievance to be fair it really is legitimate grievance so there we go this is a fantastic perfume though the the signature line isn't as good in my opinion it's just not they replaced the the high-end patchouli that's in this with amber wood to make it cheaper and it ruins the fragrance. The lavender in this is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the finest lavenders I've ever smelled, to be honest. Um, fresh, smooth, creamy, not powdery, just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I really love it. I don't know what, if it's a high-end lavender or if it's just a shit lavender. I do, the, the, it doesn't really make any difference. It smells amazing. But that was Monday. Tuesday. Tuesday I bought, I didn't buy anything on Tuesday. Tuesday I wore the last of my Iris Nazarena that was gifted to me by Natalia. Oh no, Natalia, if you're out there, I miss you. And I hope you are doing really well, whatever you are doing. Um, I haven't heard from you for a long time, but not to worry. This is one of my... I think this was one of my top pickups of last year. Maybe it was the year before. I think it was, actually. Um, but this is amazing stuff. Like, one of the best irises, in my opinion. It's I don't think it's particularly, like, natural iris, either. But the effect of, like, the, 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 the rosy raspberry thing at the top, and then this really, really staunch... Tough iris, oris root, concrete sort of thing going on. And then with the suede and the base, it's fantastic. It's greater than the sum of its parts is probably the way you would put it. But it's amazing. And I've got a, I've got a, a newer bottle, which was also very kindly gifted to us by Anuj, who bought me it and sent me it for Christmas. Aren't people lovely? People like that like Natalia and Anuj, restored my faith in humanity. You know? Good people. Um, but this is a great fragrance. And I'm really, I'm really glad to finally have it. And I'm really glad that I had this bottle 
and the newer bottle, which I have compared and there is no difference. So fear not. Fear not, peeps. Okay. Next up on Wednesday. Now, I've been having a debate with um, a couple of people about what qualifies as niche and what qualifies as indie. And they think this brand qualifies as indie. Whereas I would have said it was niche. Because indie perfume to me is kind of like someone who just makes perfumes in the basement or in the bedroom or wherever they make them. Like a self-taught perfume. And that's indie to me. But this... It, the point was made to me that this brand could be considered indie because the person did it all by themselves, but they didn't. But they commissioned a perfumer to make it for them. So I don't know. I don't think the debate's closed, but it's very interesting. And I saw that point of view, and I thought it was a good point of view. And this is La Dolore Exquise by Les Abstray, of which I am very proud. This is Eugene's perfume. Eugene made it. Or he got Antoine Lee to actually do the chemistry and make it. He was the perfumer. Eugene was the creative director. It was released in 2022, 20... was it? What year were you released? 2022. Um, rose, incense, clove. Patchouli Castorium. I don't really pass comment on these because I don't think I should. They were given to me and I've, I don't want to make a hypocrite of myself. Um, nothing would make us happier than to talk about them and give personal opinion on them. But, you know, like you've got to, you've got to, uh, you've got to stand for something, haven't you? Free bottles. I'm not a massive fan. But the only reason I accepted them was because it was Eugene. But I did say I wouldn't talk about them or give opinion on them because of that reason. And it's unfortunate because I would love to talk about them. Alas, I will not. Okay. So. Next up. On Thursday. On Thursday, I wore Shergi. This is not the bottle that I just bought. I bought a vintage... Um, I bought a vintage Shergi and a vintage Rose de Noé by Serge Luton earlier this week. And they came and I had worn Shergi, the vintage one, on my hand. I, like, I sampled it, essentially. I'm going to do a comparison video. Um... And we'll see, you know, we'll see about how the comparisons go. Because the one I bought was a Palais Royale and it's a different colour. And it is, I remember there was a big reformulation. Um, but Serge Returns is one of my favourite houses. They're absolutely sensational. They exist outside of time and space. And I will wear any Serge Return at any moment. And they don't, my normal rules for perfume don't apply to Serge Luton. And I will continue to buy them, the vintage ones, uh, the, this style bottle, as and when I see fit or that I can possibly get them at, at a non outrageous price. So, this is iris, tobacco, honey, hay. Beautiful thing. Absolutely gorgeous. Really is a very, very nice wear. I would recommend that you all try and get a sniff. Apparently the latest one's quite nice too. Okay, on to a discontinued celebrity fragrance, my friends. And this is one of the this is one of the great ones. Um, celebrity fragrances, they're not ideal. They're not great usually, let's be honest. Um, the latest ones are just cash grabs. Um, they're usually clones. But this one. Ain't none of that, and it's very discontinued, and the prices are very outrageous. But this is truly a beautiful fragrance, and a man or woman could wear this with the greatest of ease. It's a sensational wear. This is Iquitos. It's in this bottle because the bottle I had for it, the spray I went, as vintage sprayers are wont to do. So if you do collect vintage perfumes, 
you probably are aware that you will need bottles like this that I've got that you need to decant into. In fact, I would recommend that you had a little stash of these generic perfume bottles. I get mine from a place called Ampulla in the UK. I imagine they can ship them around the world. Um, but I get them from there because the sprayers on these are fantastic. The sprayers from these, honestly, right? They're better than they're better than 90, 95% of the sprayers on any of the perfumes you see before you. You know what I mean? Top, top sprayer. That's very industrial, but it's brilliant. You get two, three sprays of that and you are set. Um... But this is, this is like a fruity, at the top it's got like this kind of fruitiness, um, a little spiciness too. And then there's this irisy, patchouli, rose, oak moss dry down with a bit of leather in the base as well. And it's just, you could wear this any time. The fruit, what makes it a spring and summer thing for me, there's a bit of pissiness too for me as well. There's a bit of civet in here, which makes it very... It gives it this kind of heat, but it's beautiful. This, it's, it's an amazing perfume. You should really try it. There are minis out there, um, and the minis are cool as fuck. And there are full bottles still, but they are expensive, which is not cool as fuck. So make sure you try it before you buy it. But this is fantastic. Iquitos. That was Friday. Saturday. Yesterday. I did a, a live stream for the ages with Galen. I was going to say girl on there. Gail on. It was, it was me and Galen did, did a live stream yesterday. And it was fantastic. We had a good time. It was a nice chat. It was very laid back. And the chat was going, was going bananas. And everybody had a good time. And it was nice. You know? But this is... Roadster by Cartier, the un unfathomable why they discontinued this. Uh, it must be, th I know they discontinued the watch, so I imagine that played a role in this, and this might not have been selling very well, but it's amazing. It's a sensational designer release, if you can call Cartier a designer. It's hard to know. They're, 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 they're one of those weird ones. They're a jewellery brand, and I mean, I wear, this is my watch. Um, I love this. This is like a vintage watch, not expensive, but I absolutely fucking love it. Like, um, I've got other watches, which I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. They don't get, <laughs> they don't get worn because I just love this one. Um, but yes, this is, um, bergamot, mint, patchouli, Vetiver, maybe some vanilla as well. It's a it's a gorgeous fragrance. The bergamot and the mint give this kind of fresh green apple sort of vibe, but it's not on the nose apple. You know, it's not like I don't know if I've reviewed this. If I haven't, I will. You can tell the damage I've put in this. This was a, a this was a a signature scent of mine years ago, years ago when it like came out. 2008, 2009, 2010. Wore it for like a year or two. Like, quite a lot, you know. Not exclusively, but a lot. The performance is fantastic. And it's just a shame that you can't get it anymore. So, that's perfumery for you. Anyway, scent of the day. Scent of the day is a new purchase, which I have had for a week, but I didn't open until yesterday during my live stream with Galen. This is a very, this is, this has already been discontinued. It was out for like two and a half weeks, but there is talk that Hermes are going to bring it back and that it's going to get a general release. So I have paid top fucking dollar for this to get it in the first round of its release and had to jump through many hoops, but not to worry, that is the life of a perfume burk like me. And this is Paddock by Hermes. I think that picture on the front is amazing. I just love it. It's very cute, isn't it? It's like, come here, horse. Let me hold you. 
you know? It's it's a lovely fragrance too. It's not, I was talking to Galen this morning and it's it's good, but it's not great. It's not it's not like Bellamy, you know? It's not one of it's not like Vet of a Tonka, it's not one of those great perfumes that's gonna change the Hermes lineup, but it's a lovely, worthy addition. I hope it goes into the signature line and not the the Hermes Essence line because it's not worth Hermes Essence prices. It's got this lovely blonde honey top and then like a carrot seed smooth kind of thing in the base. Um, a little bit of chestnut. Um, absolutely gorgeous. And I love it. So... That is it, my friends. This is my fragrance rotation. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you all again soon.